Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I'd like to talk about something that is a little bit different than my norm, meaning I usually fletch my own arrows with whatever type of vein I really want, whether it's an indoor arrow with a long vein or a hunting arrow with a profile or a 3D with a short uh, boning heat vein or other type low profile vein. Today I wanna to talk about a fixed style of fletching, like a fob or a shrink wrap fletching, or in this case, a zinger. So real quick, let's talk about fletching style and why it's important important to choose a correct fletching style for the type of arrow that you want to shoot. This is an indoor arrow here, this one on my left, and it is shooting a longer profile vein. I'm able to get more helical onto it, which allows it to correct in that short 20 yard distance. This middle one here with the three white blazers, this is my hunting arrow. A very typical hunting style arrow with that high profile short vein allows for a lot of steerage. I have a pretty good helical on this one as well, and I can handle mechanical or fixed blade broadheads. This guy right here in the middle, these are boning heat veins. They're a low profile, but they're a little bit longer, and I like them because they're very quiet and allow for a very flat speeding trajectory, which allows this to be a really good 3D arrow. I even have a pin knock on there. But when it comes to a fixed style fletching, you're really doing it for two reasons. One, for convenience, but also the second for tuning. And let's talk about the first one real quick. So when it comes to a fixed fletch style arrow, you have really three options. You have something like the Zinger, you have the shrink wrap version from like NAP or something like that, and you have a FOB. Now, they all have their own different material and their own different build, and they all have their drawbacks in one way or another, except for the Zinger so far. In my testing, it has not had any drawbacks, but let's talk about them right now. Fobs, for example, there's no real problem with fobs. They're fine, they work really well, but you can't shoot them through a whisker biscuit. And more importantly, when they pop off, if you get a pass through through an animal, they're gonna take your lighted knock with you unless you shoot a really small, a very expensive lighted knock like the fire knock system. That doesn't appeal to me. I don't wanna lose a lighted knock or have to do a whole bunch of DIY things. And I don't want to shoot a fletching that wouldn't work for everybody here at uh, uh, in my house or you at home. If you shoot a whisker biscuit, which there's nothing wrong with it, you're going to blow the fletching right off even before the arrow leaves the bow. So the secondary thing seems to be shrink wrap fletching, which is super convenient. You just stick it in a pot of hot water and the fletchings are right there suctioned onto the shaft. But as you can see, this one took one shot into a rock and the actual force of the arrow impacting that, this is one of my small game stumping arrows, actually broke the fletching off here on the back. You still have this piece of shrink wrap right here on the back end, and the whole fletch slid up with the impact. This is now completely useless. It's now slid a good three, three and a half inches from the back end of the shaft, not where I wanted to have it going onto the shaft. So when Zinger reached out to me and said that they had a fixed style fletching that was able to go through a whisker biscuit and maintain its integrity while it's still on the arrow, it can even pop off but not take your knock with it, I had to give it a whirl. So this is the Z4. They make two models, the Z3 and the Z4, and that just refers to the number of fletchings. So this is a four fletch. Of course, the Z3 would be a three fletch, and you can get them in any different color style that you want. I'm a white shooter. I like to be able to see that even in this small profile vein. I like to be able to see that tracking towards my target. But you can get them in a litany of colors, and also you can get them to fit any size diameter that you want. These are 3D printed fletchings, and they are not very hard. They're actually quite malleable. I can mash these veins, I can take the whole thing off, but it does have memory. So even if I sit here and mash them, they're going to return to their original shape. So I can have multiple colors, I can get a three fletch or a four fletch, I can fit any size diameter arrow that I want. So far, it sounds like a win-win. Additionally, because it's just a slip on, slip off, and I can actually twist it, I can take it off right now, just like that, it slid right over my knock, did not pop it off. The problem here that I possibly thought is, all right, if I keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting, is it gonna move itself back the shaft? So far in my testing, I have not had it move. And the nice thing is if it does move, I can just simply twist it. Now, the cool part here is that once you go to uh, tune your arrow, let's say you're a knock tuner, you want a bare shaft tune, you can take your fletching, once you have your knock aligned and you have your knock tuning marked, you can now index your fletching any way you like, which is something different than if you do a traditional fletching method. So if you 
use a traditional fletching method like this Bitson Burger, a Bitson Burger, or even though it's a fantastic fletching system, is actually set in the three fletch in particular to set with the cock vein or the off color vein or feather to be facing the archer, which is how it would have been set up on a traditional bow. You would have the two hen feathers sticking close to the riser, shooting off of the shelf, and you'd have the hen feather or the cock, or the, excuse me, the cock feather or the cock vein sticking towards the archer. So when you fletch a three fletch arrow out of this system, you actually have to then turn the knock to get that one vein up or one vein down, depending on how your arrow rest is set up. That means on a traditional fletched arrow like this, I no longer have my knock tune in the exact right place, which means when I go to put this into the Bitsenberger, I actually have to take it out of tune by twisting the knock, kind of eyeballing where I think it would line up, then fletch the arrow, then twist the knock back, and hopefully my two lines will align back up and I will have that knock tune arrow that I've already tuned prior to fletching. As someone who has been doing that for the better part of a decade, it is a royal pain. So when you're able just to take a zinger, stick it on, align it with your knock exactly the way you want it, push it to the length up the shaft that you want, and you're ready to go. You're ready to shoot. And you didn't have to fiddle around, twisting the knock, getting the arrow aligned, and putting it into the fletching jig. So installation is super simple. Bear shaft, zinger, stick it on, align it up to where you want your knock to be, give it a little press fit, and then you can just pull it down as far as you need to. Now how far you move it down the shaft, just like any other style of fletching, is gonna depend on you and how you have your setup and your anchor point when you're in full draw. I have facial hair, so that also adds a little bit more complexity to where my fletchings sit, but I went off of one of my standard fletched arrows. Now, you'll see here that it actually is fletched farther forward, or at least it looks significantly farther forward, but in reality, the peak of this fletching of the zinger and the peak of this uh, boning blazer are actually in the same exact spot because that is the highest part of the fletching. That's going to be the part that touches your face. You're not worried about this short here in the front or when it starts to parabolic and come down on the backside. You're worried about the peak. So all I did was took one of my standard arrows already before I stripped the fletchings off, moved this up, measured it, made a mark, and then I was able to mark all of my arrows to the same distance and slide the zinger on to the correct distance so I get that that nice fletching clearance when I'm at full draw. And of course, if you want to switch between three fletch and four fletch, remember that you're going to have a vein now literally sticking directly at your face, and you might have to move it up a little bit farther than you like, depending on how close that string sits to your chin when you're at full draw. So real quick, before we get into the shooting and how I've actually been able to group with these arrows and even broadhead tune so far with these arrows, let's talk about price point. Let's talk about actually uh, buying one, and if you go to order one, what style and what a degree of offset you should be looking for. So real quick, let's talk about price point because that seems to be the snag for a lot of fixed style fletchings for a lot of people. A dozen of the zingers is going to run you about 24 bucks plus shipping. So let's just make it an outlandish amount of shipping. Let's say it's $12. That rounds it to 36. That makes it $3 per arrow per fletching. And you might go, holy crap, that is super expensive. I can buy a dozen or a hundred uh, blazer veins for about 15 bucks. And yes, that does sound significantly expensive, but you have to remember, if you're going to fletch your own arrows, you have to have a jig. And if you buy a bits and burger, and if you buy it used, it's going to run you about 40 to 50 bucks. Then you throw in your glue, and then you throw in your blazers, or any other type of vein that you want to shoot. You're still talking about $70, $80, probably at the most. Now, over time, of course, the amount of arrows that you do, that bits and burger will pay itself off. But if you don't fletch that many arrows, or if you're only particularly fletching hunting arrows, and you're not worried about different diameters of shaft, for indoor or 3D or for outdoor field rounds, a zinger fletching is a great option. So let's actually break down the cost a little bit more realistically. If you are just a guy who just shoots arrows, you don't own all the equipment to refletch your own arrows. If you take your arrows to my pro shop that I work at, we're going to charge you two or three dollars per arrow to refletch, and that includes all the materials as well as the labor. Now, if you bring us a bare shaft that's already clean, we don't have to scrape fletchings off or any glue, then that's going to cost you two dollars per arrow. And if you bring us in and and it's got two veins or a vein stuck on, all this residue from the glue, where we have to clean it off and then we have to fletch, we're gonna charge you three bucks. Now that's a not outlandish at all because that's covering overhead, labor, and all the materials and so on and so forth. That's how a pro shop's gonna operate. But if you're just a guy at home and you just need a dozen arrows fletched and you're gonna spend 24 to 36 bucks to get your dozen arrows fletched, zingers make a great secondary option. So let's say you buy your dozen zingers, it's 24 bucks, let's say it's uh, $36. 
dollars to throw in that outlandish shipping. When you actually break, damage, destroy a Zinger, it comes with a lifetime warranty. All you have to do is replace the shipping on either side, which is what, eight bucks maybe? So for eight dollars shipping, you could get a full new dozen ship right to your door in any color and style that you want. So instead of every time you destroy an arrow and going back to the pro shop and spending two to three dollars to have that arrow refletched, now you're spending eight bucks. You're spending less than a dollar an arrow to get it refletched. And quite frankly, I don't even spend that much when I use my Bits and Burger and Blazer veins. So in terms of its price point over the long haul, it definitely makes sense. So in addition to the multiple color styles that I alluded to earlier, you can also get them in different degrees of offset. One degree, three degree, and six degree. And that refers to how much that vein sits off at an angle from parallel to the shaft. The more it sits off at an angle, the more spin it's going to impart on the arrow and cause a little bit better stabilization, and particularly if you want to shoot something like a fixed blade broadhead. Now, of course, we all know that the answer to a perfectly stable arrow is one that is coming out perfectly out of a really nicely tuned bow and arrow setup. But if you're going to not be perfectly tuned, I would recommend going with a higher degree of offset, either a three or a six. Now, I have both three and six degree offset offsets here for both three and four fletch and we'll get to shooting those here in a little bit. To also go along with that stabilization thing, I was really freaked out with how short and how small these things are in comparison to even something like a blazer vein. They're actually really low profile. Their profile is almost identical to that of a boning heat vein, which is a lower profile vein commonly used by target and 3D shooters. So when I saw a super short and lower profile, I was like, do am I going to get the stabilization of that arrow in flight even if I have a really tuned arrow. So far with both three and six degrees of offset on my three and four fletch zingers, I have not seen any stabilization issues. I've simply stripped the old fletchings off, put on a zinger, and I've been able to shoot the exact same groups that I was with the standard fletching. So I have my Morel target stuck out here. I'm going to pick with the bow, set the camera down with the target, take some shots at different distances, and we'll see what kind of groups we get. All right, as a last flight test, we have my broadhead target now out here. I'm going to aim at that dark spot there in the center, and I have my Magnus Black Hornet practice head. We're going to step back to 30 yards, which is where I like to broadhead tune and check for arrow flight, see what our point of impact is, and go from there. All right, so we ended up being about two inches high at 30 yards, and I'm definitely going to blame that on shooter error. I definitely was not perfectly uh, vertical when it came to this spot here, shooting the easy V sight. So, when it comes to a fletching and a fletching control, if you have the wild left and rights when it comes to a fixed blade, and particularly something this large like the Black Hornet, which is an inch and a quarter cut and uh, seven eighths bleeders, if you see the left and rights, that means your uh, fletching is definitely not correcting. A vertical one like this, I mean, that is dead nuts perfect, just about two inches high. And quite frankly, whether that's actually the fletching or shooter error, I won't know until I shoot at 20 and 40. So let's actually do a few more tests, shoot it through a whisker brisket. I also want to test the noise level of these fletchings compared to like a boning heat vein or a boning blazer and let's just uh, see what else these things can do all right so let's do a 30 yard sound test i have a arrow fletch with three blazers at approximately a three degree right helical uh, boning heat veins with a three degree right helical also in a three fetch and then the three degree offset four fletch zingers i have the cameras set up at about 15 yards so about halfway between me and the target we're going to shoot these arrows as close to the camera without hitting it as possible see what kind of noise level we have and if I can get a decibel recording I'll put that on the screen as well. All right, our final test, the whisker biscuit. Will these not move if I shoot them repeatedly through whisker biscuit rest? So I'm using the four fletch because there's more material, which means more contact. I could shoot the three fletch through it, but if a four fletch makes it through unscathed, then the three fletch will definitely do it. I have both of these fletchings marked with a silver Sharpie ring at the front end where they meet the shaft. And if I see any black between the Sharpie and the zinger fletchings after shooting them through the whisker biscuit, let's say a dozen times, then I know we have movement. Shot one.
All right, so we got about a dozen shots in here and actually the results are kind of surprising. So this is the three degree offset through the whisker biscuit and it has come out unscathed. It's still right there next to the Sharpie line. However, one thing that has changed, and I'm gonna say it's because it's a four fletch and the fourth fletch was coming through the V. It was actually going into this kind of just open part of the whisker biscuit where you just take it through the whisker and then in order to knock it onto the string. The fletchings are actually not perfectly aligned. They're actually now kind of twisted a little bit. The arrow is still, my witness mark for my knock tune is still exactly the same, but the fletching has actually moved. So now all four are in contact with the bristles. The original, uh, though this fletch right here was actually in this open space and actually it looks like the biscuit has torqued it to allow it to actually go through the biscuit, uh, through the bristles each and every single time. I noticed that on the second shot and I kept shooting it and has not moved since. Now, the six degree did not fare as well. The six degree actually does have some movement, but this is not incre incredibly unexpected. Um, I'd never recommend somebody shoot a strong helical of any type through a whisker biscuit. Again, nothing wrong with whisker biscuit, but I do like rests where I can shoot any type of fletching style that I want and any offset that I want, like a drop away would let you do. This one has moved and it has done the exact same twisting thing and it has twisted up a little bit. Now, not an insane amount. I can see the Sharpie line actually through here. It's moved up maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe closer to three sixteenths. Um, so it's not a ton of movement, but again, the twist is insane. It's actually sitting a full 90 degree rotation from where it originally was uh, when it was originally knocked on the air. You can now see that the fletchings have actually rotated significantly. Now this is something you will see if you go onto the Zinger website. Brian and the gang have recommended that you don't shoot a six degree offset in either a three or a four fletch through a whisker biscuit. And I will never recommend with any type of fletching style that you shoot that through a fixed style rest like a whisker biscuit where you have that full contact. If you have something like a hostage rest or something that has the three brush and bristles, I don't think you would have an issue, but a full uh, full contact, violent contact. And actually, I'll put a link to a slow motion video done many years ago by Field and Stream. They show how much contact you get with a blazer style vein on a whisker biscuit. It's really an interesting watch to have. Dave Hertu did a really good job putting that video together many years ago. And I think that's the kind of violent co uh, collision and impact you're going to expect with any type of fletching, but in particular, a four fletch. So all in all, can I see myself using these fletchings for hunting season this fall? Yes, I definitely do. With the drop away style rest that I shoot, the four fletch configuration, we saw the tune of the broadhead there. That's a big fixed blade broadhead, that Magnus Black Hornet. If I was to shoot something a little bit smaller, like the Magnus Buzzcut or Stinger, or if I was to shoot a different brand like the Q80 Exodus or a Wasp drone or something like that, these things are gonna handle it with flying colors. I really think it's a great style of fletch for all the things I've talked about before, but my biggest thing is the tuning, the ease of use. You pop them on, you pop them off, and the price point really is very comparable compared to if you were to take your arrows to a shop to have them refletch for you. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about Zinger fletchings or just fletchings and styles in general, follow the links in the description below. You can hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. My email's even down there if you want that more personal touch. And if you want to learn more about Zinger fletchings, I'll put their website down below. You can watch other videos from other YouTubers and other places around the internet. Lots of great information out there. Hope you're able to get outside and enjoy the sport of archery. Archery hunting, if if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.